Welcome back everyone. So in today's video, as promised, I'm going to show you how we can create an automation and automate a plugin for Figma. So in my previous video, I showed you a sample or a automation that I created, which basically takes a layer and creates multiple duplicates at different rotations. And then you can kind of play around with the component and make different arts or different patterns out of it. So let me just quickly show you a demo and then we can get started on how to create it. So firstly, I'll just take a random shape right here. Okay, so here we have a layer. What I'll do is right click, go to plugins, then we have automator. So here we have the automation that I created, right? So let's try to run this and see how it behaves. So I click on the layer, I click on the automation. How many times I want to repeat it? 36 times at 10 degrees and the anchor point at two. And there you go, you have it created. And you also have this master component layer, right? And once you start playing around with this, you can see different kind of art right so this is really cool uh this was just a basic uh, plugin that we try to create here you can see how it starts behaving right so if i try to open this one right you can see that there are multiple uh, actions that are clubbed together to create this so in this video basically i'm going to show you how we can create this it's going to be a bit confusing in the beginning if you have zero coding knowledge but eventually once you start understanding what each action does it's going to be really helpful and you can create amazing uh, automations that will ease your workflow right so without any further ado let's get started so here we are on a new file and before we move on to the actual automator plugin tutorial, I'll try to explain you the concept of anchor points in Figma or be it any other UI design tool. So if you see, let me just take the pen tool right here and I'll take a small random shape here. So let's say this is a shape and I'll try to add some fill to that. So if you see when I try to rotate this right, it always rotates from its center that is the center of the object, which is somewhere here. But if I want to rotate it at this uh, at this point, right? let's say this is a needle and I want it to rotate from here that doesn't work right because you can't change the anchor point in figma or xd or any such similar tool so a simple hack to achieve this is use a different rectangle so let's say i'm taking a new rectangle here and what i'm doing is i'm doing it at the same height of the object if you can see these both are at the same height and now you got to multiply that by two right so now it is 416 what i'll do is i'll multiply it into two now you see it's the double height of the object that is here now place it back on the object remove the fill and group these two right and now if you try to rotate it you can see that it rotates at this point right here so this is a small hack that you can use to change the anchor point so now that you understand this concept of anchor point this would be really helpful to understand this automation that we're going to create so i'll just undo this and we'll delete the rectangle so we'll use this for the demo purpose so what i'll do is i'll right click and go to plugins go to automator so as you can see there are no automations right now what i'll do is i'll add a new automation let me just increase the height of this so that it's clearly visible so as you can see there are nothing uh, it's totally empty this is a new automation and automation is nothing but you know clubbing multiple actions to create a big task right so we have an option to add action here and as you can see we have a lot of actions these are different apis that are exposed by figma so we are using these different actions right here so you can search for these actions there are actually a lot of actions and it will take a lot of time to understand each of those but we'll be looking at the basic or the important ones that are needed to create a basic automation so the first thing we need is to get a current selection right so you need to get the selection of different objects on the page right here so for that let's search for selection and see what is related to that so if you can see we have a get current selection let's use this this would basically select the different objects or the different layers that are there and the next thing is you need to loop through those different layers right so if you have a basic coding knowledge there would be a for loop in most of the programming languages here as well we should have something similar so you can see that for each this is again used in JavaScript also so one more concept that you need to know here is actions can be nested uh, if you nest a particular action it goes in a sequence so what I'll do is I'll put it inside this and you can see that it goes under this so what happens is first it gets the selection and then the looping happens right so we want something of a nested action so that the action happens one after the other so that is what is happening here you can again drag it outside if you don't want that to happen so that is how you do it you just have to click drag it and put it inside it that gets nested under the parent one so now that we have a for loop we don't want an array because we just have one object but if you want to loop between multiple objects you can use the array as well so as you can see here we got the selection we have the first one and now as i shown you in the demo right we have to create a component so let's see what we have related to components so i'll just search for components and we have three actions here so we want to create an empty component right so i'll use that and I'll again put it inside the previous one so it got nested so for this component we need to give the properties right so let's 
start with the name. So what I'll do is I'll call this as a base layer and the width. I want it to be the same width as this. So for that, you need to use a variable. So always a variable in automator starts with double braces. OK, and then you use item dot. And you have these different parameters that you can use, right? So we want the same as the width, right? So I'll use width coming to height. This is something we want to change. So item dot height. We don't want the same height, right? As I showed you before, we want to double the height. So what we'll do here, we'll multiply it by two so that the anchor point goes at this point right here. And X and Y again, you can give it the same as the item that we are using here or the same uh, layer. So item dot X and this would be item dot Y. Great and description it's optional you can leave it so let's try to uh, run this and see how far it works so what i'll do i'll select the object and i'll click on the play button so as you can see uh, we have a component that is being created if you can see this is empty at the moment we have nothing inside it so an empty component got created the next thing is we want to add this particular vector or the object into the component right so i'll just undo this okay and now we'll move back to the automator so once we created the empty component the height is perfect we need to get the selection of this one and put it inside it right so for that again you need to select the object so we go for the get current selection put it inside this and now let's see what happens I'll click on play. So if you can see here, the selection is on this object and the object is being created. That's great, right? So we have the component, we have the object inside it, but the position of it is something wrong, right? So we need to set the position back into the top of this frame or this component. So for that, what we can do, I'll just undo it back again. We need to set a position. So let's see what we have related to positions right here. So if I search for position, you can see that you can set a position, right? So just go for that, put it inside this and here we can set the position. So we want the object to start at zero zero of the component, right? So if you see the component frame, we want that object to sit inside it. So simply just give it as zero and zero. Now again, I'll play it for you. There you go. We have the full component. We have the layer inside it. So the component with the layer is being created so far. So good. But let me just undo it again. I'll run it for you. So if you can see the component is created, but the selection is on this one, right? So this would be a problem for us to repeat it, right? We want the base layer to get selected so that we can loop it multiple times and rotate it. So currently the selection is on this item. We want that to change. So let's see for that what we can do. I'll undo it back again. And now we need to find the different layers. So we don't have an option to go to select a parent or anything like that. So what we can do is we need to find the different layers. So I'll click on find layer. I'll put it inside this again. So we want to find everything in the current page where the name or we could say the name contains. So we gave a name here, right? So that is the base layer. So let's use the same thing. So if the name contains a base layer in it, it will get selected. OK, now it basically finds it, but it doesn't select. So for the selection to happen, you need to again use the selection. So let's see what we have related to selections right here. We have an option to set the selection, right? So here what is happening, it is trying to find the layer name but to set the selection back to it you need to use a set selection so i i put it inside it i again nest it now let's run it back again so right now the component got created the position got set we found the layer and the selection is set back to the base layer right so before the selection was on the vector layer but now it is on the base layer so far everything looks good i'll just undo it back again so now we have the selection of the component everything looks good now all we got to do is repeat that component multiple times so for repeating a particular action you have an action called as repeat you can see here so i'll use the repeat put it inside this let's leave it at five for now but what are we going to repeat we want to repeat the component multiple times and in Figma you want to repeat a component it is basically an instance right so let's see what we have related to instances so if I search for instance you can see that we have an option to insert an instance so I'll use that I'll put it inside this and it's basically asking the name of the component that you want to repeat so what was the name of the component that we created it's the base layer so I'll use the same name here so an instance of this component will get added here so far everything looks good let's try to run it so as you can see, 
this is the main component and instance got added five times so so far it works good right but everything is over each other right so that is we don't want that we want the rotation to happen so i'll undo it back again and now we want to set a rotation so let's see what we have related to rotations you can see there's an option to set rotation so let's try to use this and see what happens so i want an instance to get created and i want its rotation to go to 20 degrees so let's see what happens with this i'll play it as you can see all these got rotated to 20 degrees right so we want to have it multiple times right one at 10 one at 20 one at 30 and so on right so for that we need to use the concept of variables variables are nothing but different uh, locations where you can store a value so you can understand it like that first thing is we want to ask the user to provide how many times they want to repeat it so let's do that for now so what i'll do is we want to ask the user so if i say ask ask for an input let's put it on the top right here first thing is we want to get the count how many times they want to repeat it so you can say okay so this is the question and the value that the user enters goes and gets stores in this particular variable right and that particular variable we want to use it in repeat so how do we do that the variable name we gave is count so come back to repeat to use a variable just use double braces and the name now it'll ask you the count and that will get added here. So let's try this for now. Let's see how that works. So I'll click on play. So as you can see, it's asking me an input. If I say 10 times, so you can see that it got repeated 10 times, right? So you got the basic understanding of how a variable works, right? So let me just undo this for setting the angle as well. First thing is we'll use a set variable. Okay, and we'll put it on the top. We'll give it a basic value of zero. Okay, so initially the value of the angle would be at zero. And here we'll use another set variable so that we change the variable every time it repeats. So the first time it creates a duplicate of the component, it should be at zero degrees, then go to 10, then go to 20 and so on, right? So for that reason, we are using this additional variable here and we'll give it the same name. But this time we want the angle to get added with 10. Okay, so first time it is a zero because we set the angle at zero so it becomes 10 the next time it becomes 20 the next time 30 and so on so far it looks good but we need to use this angle for the rotation right so currently this is a static value we need to change this and use the value that is getting created here so again i'll set it at angle so the value gets added here and the rotation should work so everything looks good let's see how this works so i hit on play i want to repeat it let's say 35 times done Boom, there you go. So that worked amazing, right? And now if I start playing around with this, you can see how it works. Amazing, right? I can understand this is a bit complicated to understand if you're totally new to programming or something like related to this. But once you get a hang of it, it really becomes very easy. You have different actions. You just have to try them, nest them together to create a particular task. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you understood the basics right here. But uh, if it is still confusing, do let me in the comments below. I'll try to create a much simpler automation to help you understand how this works. Thanks for watching. Thank you.